Scott Brown here, the Makita DRS 780. In today's exciting episode, we are going to discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the first ever cordless rear handle circular saw and uh, whether or not I recommend you buy it. First of all, let's look at the facts. This is a 36 volt Makita saw running on two 18 volt batteries. It has a brushless motor, a seven and a quarter inch blade or 185 millimeters. Cutting capacity is 65 millimeters at 90 degrees. 5,100 RPM, which is blade speed. And it cuts 558 cuts per charge. And that's going through four by two on two fully charged five amp batteries. Now I'm going to be referring to this smaller Makita saw throughout this review. Not because it's comparable to this saw, these are two very different ones, but because this is the cordless saw that I've had for the last three years and I want to know what the new one can do that the old one can't. So Makita said that this will do 558 cuts on a fully charged set of batteries. Sometimes that doesn't tell the whole story. See, I'm more likely to use this for ripping heavy timber. That would be my reason for buying the big saw when I've already got the small saw. What I want to know is how long these batteries will go rather than how many cuts they'll do. Okay. Let's test that. Start the clock. Eight minutes. Eight minutes and 17 seconds. There we go. Hey, it shows it's got full batteries even after that. <laughs> so I actually think it overheated. Because look, according to the batteries. Okay, that was a failed experiment. All right, so that did fail, but Runtime really isn't the most crucial element of the saw. If I'm comparing it to this one, which only runs on one battery, it's gonna have longer runtime. That isn't why I would get the bigger saw. The reason I get the bigger saw is for the power that the bigger saw has. See, the small one has 5,000 RPM and the big one has 5,100 RPM. That's the speed of the blade, pretty comparable. The depth of cut on the smaller one is 57 millimeters, which is only eight millimeters shallower than this. So again, pretty comparable. The smaller one is obviously much lighter. Generally speaking, I saw a tool that is lighter is gonna be easier to use. So this is heavier, this is bulkier. Now where the DRS 780 shines is in its torque. The ability to apply more power as you're cutting. That's what this has over this. Now let's conduct another experiment to see if that's true. You get the point. The 36 volt kicks in with a bit more power when it needs it, helping you rip the timber. So if you ask me who the saw is for, I would say it's for framers. The rear handle style of the saw is great for picking up a piece of timber and cutting it straight. So if you're standing up pre-nailed wall frames on a house and you only have to make a handful of cuts throughout the day, you don't want to set up a drop saw and go back and forth to it every time you want to make a cut. This saw would be perfect. You know it has the power to push through larger boards and it's cordless so you're going to be able to carry it around site and hang it on rafters and joists. If I was building a brand new house from start to finish, it's likely to be pre-nailed. This saw would be perfect for it. So the question is, would I, Scott Brown, recommend buying this saw? 
Well, I can only base it on my needs. If you have similar needs, you might be able to relate. I love the small saw. It's a little bit rickety. The levers aren't the most solid in the world. The base plates a little bit rickety as well, but I still love it. It's such a great little saw. For day-to-day -day renovation of houses, this is a great circular saw to have, but it falls short in strength, as you saw before, and depth. So that's where my other saw comes in. This nine and a quarter monster, which has a cord, is what I use for ripping heavy timber. I was working on a retaining wall last year that had treated timber that was wet that needed to be ripped. My small circular saw just wouldn't stand a chance with that stuff. So that's where this beauty came in here. Another place that I use this saw is for cutting down posts. You use the great depth capabilities of this saw to trim the posts down. So it has the strength and it has the depth. Now, going to the saw of the day. One of the questions has been answered and that is power. This has the power and as long as you've got enough batteries, which I do, I've got about six or seven batteries, I'm not gonna worry about it running out. But one thing it doesn't have is the depth. It's gonna take a few cuts to get through a post. Circular saws are like jigsaws, are like grinders, are like multi-tools in that the benefits of it being cordless outweigh a lot of the benefits of a corded tool. Being able to take the saw all over the building site and not worry about plugging it in is huge. I am willing to sacrifice this depth for its portability. So I guess that answers it. I would buy this saw and it would probably replace 80% of what my big corded saw does. So yeah, that's what I think of the Makita rear handle saw. Obviously you don't have to go with Makita, the only reason I do go with Makita is because I started buying the batteries and uh, I just kept buying tools to match those batteries. I'm a big believer in getting the best tool no matter what brand it is. I've got my Festool vacuum, my DeWalt table saw and drop saw. I got Hitachi nail guns. I've always just got the tool that I like rather than sticking with a particular brand. So if you have a rear handle saw or a saw that would compare to this one that I reviewed today, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, until then, um, see you guys in the next exciting episode. And uh, yeah. Just before you go, it is so hot in here. That whole time I was roasting, but this here affects the microphone. So I couldn't even turn the fan on. All right, see you in the next exciting episode. Bye, bye, bye. Whew.